Well, good morning and welcome to Riverside Church. Could we stand together? We've come to remember that in Christ alone, our hope is found. He is all to us this morning. So let's sing this truth together. That God is the one that we find refuge in. That Jesus is the one we run to in times of trouble. So let's sing this out together, church. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, and my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, it's firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. But then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again. And as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine. I am born. With the precious blood of Christ. Oh. first cry to my final breath Jesus commands my destiny and no power of hell no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home here in the power of Christ I'll stay rest in you Jesus our hope in you alone church let's sing this out one more time 
till he returns or he calls me home here in the power of Christ I'll stand here in the power of Christ we stand amen our hope is anchored this morning in Jesus' death and resurrection. And what he secured for us is sonship, daughtership, belonging to the Most High God. So we sing this out together. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in all his love. Runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child. forsaken I am who you say I am you are for me not against me I am who you say I am I am chosen not forsaken I am who you say I am you are for me not against me I am who you say I chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I 
Thank you for the love that you have lavished on us, that you have poured out on us through the work of Jesus, reminding us by your spirit of your love. So this morning, we just come before you. We thank you that in your house, there is a place for us. So we come boldly, Father, laying our burdens before your feet, bringing to you our need, asking for your grace and your mercy to be poured out on us, your children. Like children, we come, we run to the presence of our Father. And we ask for your love to be poured out on us afresh that we would remember the love of Jesus this morning. We join with creation and we sing your praise for all that you've done. The rocks cry out, the trees cry out, all of nature cries out saying our God reigns. He is king over all, he is sovereign over all the earth. So we join with creation and we join with the saints who have gone before us the church that has gone before us and the angels that surround your throne. And with one collective voice, we sing, great are you, Lord, and greatly to be praised. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. People of God, we're a part of a bigger story than just this moment here. The church has been worshiping this God, our God, for many, many generations. We get to join with those voices. We join with the angels in heaven when we lift up praise to our God. He's worthy of our praise this morning. So let's sing this together. You give life, you are love, and you bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. The people of God sing, Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath. In our lives, so we pour out our praise to you only. Great are you, Lord. Sing us out. You give life. Yes, you do. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. Restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. And be praised. And it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath. to Jesus. Our breath is not our own. It's a gift given to us by God. So we will praise him till our dying breath. People of God, let's sing this together. All the earth will shout your praise. 
and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry and these bones will sing great are you lord and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing his breath in our lungs we pour out our praise just tell the Lord thank you would you be seated let's just go to the Lord in prayer for a minute and and just slow the rhythm down just for a second come before the Lord would you bow your head and let's just take a minute and stop before God and dig into this truth. He gives you breath. He fills you with life. And what, what, what a joy it is to pour out our breath to God in praise and say, Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise you, God. Friends, just can you think about this one truth for a moment? God is good. If in this moment you will just open your heart before Him, seek Him, ask Him for whatever you need, He will not take this occasion to then do you harm, to give you less life. good sometimes it's it's easy for us to believe that God is all powerful he's able he's even wise and all knowing but to know that he's good and all loving we shrink back but I encourage you today to lean in to bring your cares before the Lord. Lord, in this moment, we 
we humbly and joyfully confess that we need you. Would you help us? Would you provide for us physically, materially? Would you give us health? Would you would you restore our souls? And Lord, each concern, relationships, children, parents, spouses, friends, work, whatever it may be, Lord, we lay it before you. I'm just in this moment, would you thank the Lord for hearing you just privately there, Acknowledge that He's with you. Welcome the presence of the Lord. Acknowledge His goodness. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good morning. My name is Brian Brookins, and I'm part of the team here at Riverside. I want to welcome you. It is so wonderful to be here and to be together celebrating as this Riverside Church. And part of our worship is always given to worship the Lord with our financial gifts. And this is really, uh, um, this is a gift that God gives to us. I... I was talking with someone this week, and they were telling me about reading the Wall Street Journal, and they were giving me all of these predictions of recession and financial decrease and, and how anxious they were getting, and they were trying to trust the Lord. And, and uh, I was, uh, I mean, this such profound wisdom and also concern and then I realized this was, this was my youngest son telling me about what's going to happen with the economy. And uh, we immediately went to this place, and Beth was with us, of saying, ah, this is so good for our souls. To put our hope in God and not all the stuff that is fading away. And every time we give, we are we are confessing, God, my hope is in you. You're faithful. You take care of me. Everything I need comes from you. And I'm worshiping you and acknowledging that. And this is, this is a confession of thanksgiving and faith all in one act. We want to live generous lives. We want to see God transform us. If I could, if I could just take a risk and say it boldly, from the love of money to the love of God, and to live generous lives. So we, this is a gift. This is a, this is a way where, where we can take an act of, of faith in worship to the Lord. So we invite you to give. You can give in a variety of ways. You can text uh, the word give, the key word give, to our church number, 954-737-4723. Or you can go to our, our website, and you'll find our giving platform there. Or... You can give in person if, uh, if you're like, like Beth and myself and five other people who still write checks, you're welcome to place your gift in the basket in the, in the back, in the boxes in the back if you're here in person. Welcome. Well, today we, uh, we have a treat. Stephen Lee is going to be preaching for us. And Stephen is, uh, Stephen is a friend. I would describe Stephen as a middle-aged, good-looking black man who I hear is very good at basketball and an exceptional communicator. And since I have none of that going on in my own life, <laughs> I'm just living vicariously through my friends. And Stephen has become a friend. Stephen and Tiffany are here. They have six kids. And Stephen pastors Legacy Church here in Coconut Creek, a church plant 
And it's been a tough time to uh, be the pastor of a church plant, planning shortly before the pandemic hit. And these, these friends have been faithful through a very difficult season. And uh, this is just really an exceptional Christian man that you're going to hear from today. Uh, he loves to work with leaders and uh, to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I'm going to pray one more time, and then Riverside, and I'm, going, I'm going to ask you to welcome Stephen as he comes to share. Lord, thank you for my friend Stephen Lee. I'm grateful that you providentially brought us into the same orbit and that we can share some of life together in ministry here in South Florida. He is a gift to our region, and we want to just receive Stephen and Tiffany as they're with us today in the ministry of your word and your spirit given through this man. May he know your favor, your pleasure as he preaches and teaches. Open our, our hearts, renew our minds, and we thank you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you welcome Stephen Lee as he comes to share? Well, praise the Lord, Riverside. It's so good to uh, be with you all on this morning. And um, I used to be able to play basketball. I'm older now, so my knees and my back and all those things act up. Uh, but again, it's just such an honor to be here and uh, Again, I'm just thankful, thankful for all of you to see all of your faces this morning. I know that it rained a little bit this morning, and that rain in South Florida is like snow. So to all of our faithful who are here and to those of us who are watching online, again, I just bring you greetings. I wanted to very quickly, uh, essentially just again to thank uh, Pastor Brian and uh, his lovely wife, Beth. Let's just give them a round of applause. Uh, and I just, again, I think for both of them uh, to have been in ministry in South Florida for over 30 plus years, um, to uh, really have committed to give, giving their lives to seeing the gospel pro proclaimed, to see communities impacted, I'm very thankful uh, for Brian. Uh, one of the very first calls that I got when the pandemic uh, happened uh, was from your pastor, uh, just to express his love and his care, to let uh, us know that he was praying for us and that um, if there was any needs that we had to just give him a shout. And so, again, I'm just very thankful for him and his friendship. Uh, he pays for lunch most of the times. Amen. <laughs> when we hang out most of the time. I uh, also want to give a shout out to my lovely bride of 17 years, Tiffany Lee. I'm so thankful for you. She is my best friend. We've been married for 17 years. We have six kids. Yes, we have cable, but it doesn't work. Um, and so I'm so thankful for you. I've got my wonderful six kids. Uh, actually, I'll show that picture one more time just so you all can see them on this beautiful LED screen. Uh, Shania is my oldest. She's in the front. She is in sixth grade. Uh, and uh, she's at West Glades Middle, and then my son Silas, who's my oldest boy, he's a fifth grader, no, fourth grader, fourth grader uh, at Park Trails Elementary. And then here's the rest of the Rugrats. We've got Shania, Silas, Sawyer, Stefan, Shaw, and Shaden. So we did a lot of S's. We just, you know, y'all y'all know, it just got tough. The last two are Shaw and Shaden. We just ran out of, <laughs> we, just, we just said, hey, let's just kind of put this together. So um, very honored, very, very thankful to be here. Um, again, want to shout out uh, just to our online family, those of you who all are watching online, and uh, to all of you here. I hope I didn't miss anything else. Tiff, I missed anything else? She kind of keeps me, she keeps me on my P's and toes. Let me make sure. Welcome, Pastor Brian. Also, to all the servant leaders, to all the folks that are serving out front, the parking, the staff, the ministry team, the worship team, let's just give them a, a hand of applause and appreciation as well. And then I also, just lastly, want to shout out my legacy family. We have a number of our legacy family that are here. Uh, just you all wave your hands. I'm so thankful uh, for you all and for your support. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to start my timer. Here we go. All right. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me uh, to the book of Mark. We're going to be in Mark, the fourth chapter. Mark, the fourth chapter. 
uh, and we're going to look at verses 35 through 41 today. Mark the fourth chapter, and we're going to look at verses 35 through 41. When you get there, say, I'm there. Amen. Amen. Verse 35 reads, it says, On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, this is Jesus, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat just as he was. And the other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat so that the boat was already filling. But Jesus was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and they said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and he rebuked the wind and he said to the sea, peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. He said to them, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, who then is this that even the wind and the seas obey him? I want to speak to you all this morning from the subject, finding peace in the midst of your storm. Finding peace in the midst of your storm. Let's pray one more time and ask God's help. Uh, this morning. Lord Jesus, we bless and we honor you today. And this is certainly the day that you have made, and we're making a choice and a declaration to rejoice and to be glad in it. Father, I'm so thankful for every person who's gathered here, every person who's watching online. Lord, the people are not here to see me and to hear from me. They are here to hear a word from you. And so, Father, I pray that you move me out the way and that you would speak through me so that the people of God would be encouraged, that would be challenged, uh, so that we can accomplish the purposes for which we've been created. Lord, we love you so much, Jesus. We worship you. We glorify you. We magnify you today. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen, amen. Riverside, um, my wife and I and our five kids at the time moved to South Florida almost five years ago. It'll be five years this August. And um, one of the first discussions that my wife and I had when we were considering moving to South Florida, we were church planners in Washington, D.C. We had been there for three and a half years. Um, we had a great relationship with Spanish River Church. Uh, they actually helped to plant the first church that we pastored in Washington, D.C. And so we were, uh, we, were, we were somewhat familiar with South Florida. One of the things that we loved about South Florida, we loved the weather. Amen? We loved the weather. Uh, we love the food. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We love the food. We love the diversity. Uh, we just loved how South Floridians are just kind of carefree and just love life. The only challenge that my wife had with South Florida uh, was this thing that we experienced every June-ish was hurricane season. That was her one hesitation. And so as we were praying through making the move down here, I said, babe, listen, God's got us. God's in control. Uh, you can trust me. And so we decided in August of 2017 to pack up. Uh, we moved and we stayed in Airbnb for about a month in August of 2017. And guess what happens in September? Come on, family. In September of 2017, guess what happens? Hurricane what? Hurricane Andrew. Is it Andrew? I'm sorry, not Andrew. What was it? Irma. I'm sorry. See, look, South Floridians, y'all help me out. So family, we pack up our minivan. We get here in August. And less than three, year, three weeks later, Hurricane Irma, which is not a Category 1, Hurricane Irma is a category five. We start, you know, looking at the news channels and we see all the things that happen. Y'all have to imagine, we're from DC. We don't do hurricanes. And I, I promised my wife, I said, babe, you can trust me. 
And so less than three weeks later, we're in our apartment and we hear her, a category five hurricanes coming and uh, we we freak out. We're not prepared. And, and so we start having to hear about things like hurricane shutters and and flashlights and gas and all this other stuff. And y'all know what really messed us up. And see, if you've been in South Florida, I know y'all are one of those people because y'all don't worry about this stuff. When we went to the gas station, they were out of gas. It messed me up. And I remember talking to my wife and I said, babe, we felt unprepared. And long story short, family, we left. <laughs> we were in our apartment for about two weeks and we got an email from our community coordinators. They said, he wants you to put up hurricane shutters. And we just, we just left, we freaked out. And here's what I also know about you South Florida. A lot of y'all don't even put up hurricane shutters. <laughs> and so I remember, and this was again, we had been here about three weeks. I remember we drove back and, and we had, you know, said our farewells. We had been in, you know, DC for about four years. And, and folks were like, y'all are back. And I said, well, it's a, it's a long story. We're just back for a little bit. <laughs> But, but here's one of the things that I learned just very early is that there's a difference, especially in South Florida, um, for people that are prepared for storms and people that aren't prepared for storms. There's a difference. There's a just difference in how they walk, their confidence, how they, how they talk, how they communicate. And here's what I want to admit to you. On, in August of 2017, we were unprepared for hurricane season, and we left. But here's what I also realized again, because I've been here for five years. I'm, 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 you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not a native, but I'm just gotten a ability to understand South Florida a little bit more. There's a difference again if you've been in South Florida a little while, and and I just. You know, there's just a different walk, there's a different talk, there's a different energy and confidence to people who have been in South Florida for a long time who've experienced these storms. And so when I begin to think about that, I think the spiritual truth that really connects to this particular passage that we're looking at today is this kind of principle that as followers of Christ, we must be prepared to experience storms and difficulties and challenges. And if you've been a follower of Jesus for even a week or two weeks, or some of us have been followers of Jesus for 20 or 30 years, you understand that, that something that comes with the territory in following Jesus is storms and difficulties and challenges. And, and the text that we have here, the disciples have been following Jesus. And Jesus, in this particular context, invites them on mission uh, to see the gospel spread, to see the kingdom of God announced. And then this particular text, here's what we have. We have the disciples being directed by Jesus into a storm. And get this, family, Jesus falls asleep. Falls asleep. It says that he had a cushion. And so here's what I want to communicate to you all today. Again, I promise I won't keep you too long. I'll have you out here about 1 o'clock or 1.30. Amen. Praise the Lord. I won't keep you too long, but so here's, here's what I want to communicate to us today is, is that it's possible for you and I as followers of Jesus to find peace in the midst of our storms. Let me just give a quick definition of what storms can be. Storms in our life can be any trial, any difficulty, or any testing of our faith that results from us following Jesus faithfully. So storms can be any trial, any difficulty, or any testing of our faith that results from our experience of following Jesus. I was so thankful that I grew up in a youth ministry. I pastor Reverend Berkeley, one of my favorite youth pastors. I remember John 16, 33. I just remember that was something that was ingrained in us and that just this truth that when we chose to follow Jesus, in some sense, Pat, Reverend Berkeley just, he just knew to communicate to us that we knew that there would often be challenges and troubles and, and, and crises of faith, but that God was faithful to preserve us in the midst of that. So I want us to consider what storms are, but what I want to talk to you about just very briefly is what storms often produce. I, I grew up in Washington, D.C., but my, my family, my dad's side of my family was from Birmingham. Any folks from Birmingham, Alabama, the South, 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 South. Okay, we've got some Birmingham folks here. So my grandmother lived to be 101 years old. 
Praise the Lord. And um, whenever we would visit her, and if a storm happened, I don't know, again, some of you all grew up in a house like this. When a storm happened, it's not like the kids nowadays. They have the, you know, the roadblocks and all these other types of things. When, when a storm happened in grandma's house, guess what you did? You sat down. You sat down. You, it, it's, I, I just remember that you would, you would cut off the lights. Uh, you, you, you would sit still. My grandmother used to say, God's doing his thing. And she would just kind of remind us. And so after the storm passed, uh, then we could kind of resume what we're doing. But here's one of the things that I learned very early is that it's really challenging to go through a storm and to not be in some sense emotionally engaged. Like storms, they, they, they engage our senses, our intellect, and our emotions. And so I just wrote down this week a few of the things that storms often produce in us. This is not an exhaustive list. These are just things that I've experienced. These are things that perhaps some of you have experienced. But again, I just want to read a few of these to you. Here are some of the things that storms in our life often produce. Isolation over transparent and edifying relationships. Sometimes we experience storms. We, we feel isolated. We, we feel withdrawn from perhaps people uh, that we felt closest to. Storms often produce fearfulness rather than the confidence that God is leading us in the right direction. Anybody ever been in a storm and you just, you just perhaps are, are a little bit uneasy about the direction that you might be heading in? Here, here's, here's another thing that storms produce is storms often produce impatience instead of embracing the unexpected joy of following Jesus in the midst of uncertainty. Those are what storms produce in our life. Storms also produce insecurity, which leads you to shrink from using your gifts for the benefit of others to a mode of self-preservation. So you think about just the behavior of the disciples in this story, you can see all of these different emotions at play. Here's another one. It says storms often produce a helplessness where we feel exposed rather than protected and secure. Has anybody ever experienced a storm in your life where you've wondered, God, have you forgotten about me? God, God are you here? Are you hearing my prayers? Do you, do you care for me? Storms often produce a reduced visibility rather than clarity about your assignment. That's what storms produce is you begin to second guess yourself. You know what God has called you to. But when you're in a storm, you're trying to determine, Lord, it, did you really say that? Are you really here? Are you really, really with me? Storms often produce a physical and spiritual fatigue instead of an boldness to experience God through the spiritual disciplines. It gets really hard to pray when you're in a storm. It gets really hard to go to the connect group when you're in a storm. It gets really hard to serve when you're in a storm season. Storms often produce in our conversations with God. Get this. It's in our conversations with God when we're in a stormy season, we are often accusatory towards God rather than maintaining a posture of humility and trust with lament. It's okay to lament, but perhaps our conversations with God move to more we're accusing God of what he's not doing more so than maintaining a posture of humility and trust. I just got one more. Is that storms in our life often produce a loss of hope, which is just the confident expectation that our tomorrow will be better than our today, rather than a joyful optimism about the future in spite of your present circumstances. That's what storms produce. And, and here's what I, I want to say to all of us here today and those of you who are watching online. If you are a follower of Jesus, you will experience storms. You'll experience them. But here's what I believe the good news is today is that Jesus demonstrates in this particular text how you and I can experience peace in the midst of of the storms that we experience. And I've just got three reminders for you uh, this morning, and I promise you I will get out your way. Here's reminder number one. It comes from verses 35 through 37. The first reminder is that we've got to remember the words that Jesus has spoken. If you want to persevere in a storm season, if you want to persevere perhaps in a season where you're experiencing unclarity or 
a season where you feel particularly pressed, you've got to remember the words of Jesus. And let me just say this very quickly. Uh, here, here's typically how life goes. You're either um, about to go into a storm, you're in a storm, or you're coming out of a storm. All right? So I mean, that's just how life is. And so what's most important for us today as followers of Christ, for those of us who are followers of Christ here, is that we be prepared regardless of the season that we're in. So my very first point for us this morning is that we've got to remember the words that Jesus has spoken. Here's where it says in verse 35. Look at verse 35 with me. It says, on that day when evening had come, Jesus, the Son of God, says, let us go across to the other side. He says, let us go across the other side. And so you've got to remember when you find yourself in a stormy season, you've got to remember what are the words that Jesus has said. You've got to be able to hold on to the truth of the word of God. Here's what Isaiah 40 verse 8 says. Isaiah 40 verse 8 says that the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. So you've got to remember, and I, I know that it's difficult. I know that it's challenging. You've got to know in the midst of the challenges and the circumstances you experience that Jesus has spoken a word over your life. And you've got to hold on to it. You've got to be comforted by it. You've got to know that if he said it, we're going to the other side. Amen. Amen. Philippians 1.6 is a scripture which has always been encouragement to me. Paul says that the good work that Jesus has started in you, he will finish. So, y'all, when we look at verse 35, and I know that it's going to get chaotic after this verse, but we've got to know that Jesus said, our resurrected Savior said, our, our King who's at God's right hand said, we are going to the other side. You're going to make it. You're going to persevere. God has put everything in you and around you to help you to accomplish the purpose that he has for your life. Let me just kind of give you three things that I believe are a part of your arsenal in this particular text. The first one is the scriptures. Here's what the scriptures, I believe, entail. The scriptures entail for us God's plans and God's promises. When you're in a stormy season, you need the word of God. Somebody said the word of God. You need the word of God. And I had just a word for our teenagers and our middle school students. Don't be ashamed that you're relying on the word of God to direct your life. Don't be ashamed about it. Don't be ashamed that as followers of Christ, we are relying on God's word to give us direction, and insight and wisdom. So the scriptures contain God's plan and God's promises. Here's number two that I just want to give you this. I'm just, I'm just throwing this in. I was just thinking about you all this week, is that you also need the scriptures, but you need, somebody say stories. So you need scriptures. Here's what stories entail, and I believe this is in the Old and New Testament, and then also personally, what stories entail is what God has done in the past that you can use in a stormy season to encourage you that what God has done in the past He's committed to doing in the future. Amen. That's why I love a multi-generational church, because it's it's just good to be around some saints who have been through some things that you struggle with. Amen. To, to be in a church and to be in a community with other believers that love the Lord and desire to grow in the grace and the knowledge of Christ so that you have some stories and some relationships that God uses to encourage you when you're experiencing difficult circumstances. So you need stories. My favorite seminary professor always said, Dr. Allman, he said that what God has done in the past is a model and a promise of what God desires to do in the future. But God is too creative to do the same thing the same way twice. So y'all, here's what, here's what happens. I know it's, it's a little bit crazy. What, happen, what should happen in our lives is when we find ourselves in stormy seasons, we should be in some sense giddy because we're trying to, I mean, part of us is trying to imagine, God, how are you going to show yourself strong? How, how, how are you going to glorify yourself in the midst of this difficulty? Y'all, I told you I have y'all about one. Let me keep going. Amen. All right. Scriptures, stories. Here's, here's the third thing I think you need in this particular, is that you need some storm buddies. Somebody say storm buddies. 
You need some relationships in your life and some friends in your life that can encourage you to continue pressing on in spite of what you're experiencing. What Isaiah 40 verse 8 is communicating to us is that the word of God is unchanging, but your circumstances will change. Do not believe the lie that you don't need the church. Amen. We need each other. We need uh, we need to be present as much as we can. We, like like we, we need to understand that God uses this gathering and this fellowship to, to encourage us and to spur us on. And you need some storm buddies. You need some friends who will share their stories of faith to encourage you. Number two is the first thing is, again, we need to remember the words that Jesus has spoken. Here's my second reminder. It's in verses 38 and 39, is that we also need to remember that Jesus is present with you. We need to remember that Jesus is present with you. I, I love this story, y'all. And again, we could spend hours on just all the details and all the nuances of this particular story. But one of the things which is, is, is most kind of comical, don't tell me that God didn't have a sense of you. It, it's comical that when this storm is taking place, Jesus is knocked out. No, I mean, don't tell me the Bible is not just alive and, and creative. I mean, just like Jesus is literally on the boat. It says, y'all, he has a cushion. He, like, he's got a love sack. I mean, he's, he, I mean, like, Jesus is, is knocked out. And what I love about that, again, just, again, just kind of a highlight, is it, it highlights Jesus' humanity. Though he's 100% God and 100% man, it highlights that in, in, his, um, in his kind of pre-resurrected state, I mean, like, Jesus experienced what we experienced, the fatigue. Um, I mean, some of y'all are, are trying as best you can right now to keep your eyes open. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're glad you're here. So it just reminds me that Jesus is human. And, and here's one of the things that I thought about this week. Whenever you go to sleep, think about it. whenever you go to sleep, even if you're passed out in here, it's okay, praise the Lord. We just, you, you're going to get it. Um, I don't know anybody that goes to sleep that wants to be woken up. Amen. Praise the Lord. We got six kids. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Nobody who goes to sleep desires to be woken up. Amen. So I believe that Jesus is really intentional that I need the rest. I need the rest. But in the midst of this, y'all, this is what's so crazy is that he's got disciples with them who he's spoken to. And the word that, they, that he spoke should have comforted them and should have perhaps, and this is going to bless somebody, should have perhaps encouraged them to do what Jesus had done. Just take a rest. Some of y'all need to take a rest. Somebody said, go to sleep. Not now. But after you, some of y'all just need to know that sometimes the best thing you can do in a storm is do what Jesus did. Amen. You got to remember that Jesus is present with you. And so we, we benefit in 2022 from progressive revelation. The disciples didn't have all of this stuff. But, but what we benefit from is knowing that, yes, Jesus will die for the sins of the world. Jesus uh, will be resurrected. Jesus will ascend to God's right hand. Jesus will send the spirit to indwell believers. And so the disciples had to look at the boat and to draw comfort that Jesus was who he said he was based on his presence in the boat. As New Testament believers, here's what we have. We know that when Jesus ascends to the right hand of the father, he sends the spirit and the spirit's presence in our life is a reminder that he's with us. Amen. So here's what you got to know in a stormy season. And listen, y'all, you've got to know that Jesus has not left you. You've got to know if the spirit of God indwells you. You've got to know that you're that you're Jesus's, uh, I mean, that you're God's child and that you're Jesus's brother or sister. You, you've got to know that Jesus is present with you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Um, here's here's a, just an a insight that I had in this particular text. If you look at Mark, uh, the fourth chapter, and it says in verse 38, it says, but when he was in the stern, uh, stern asleep on the cushion, and they woke him and said, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Actually, no, I'm sorry, verse 37. It says, and a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so the boat was already filling. Pastor Brian actually preached a little bit of my sermon before he got up. Here, here's, here is what, 
Here's what causes the disciples angst. What causes the disciples angst is the waves beating up against the boat. And the boat is what they assume is sustaining them. Get this, family. Here's what often causes our issues in life is that God allows the storms to break up against the stuff that we believe is sustaining us. Our 401k, amen? That relationship. Um, our, our church plant, the building that we were meeting in. The, the ministry that we felt called to. And so storms often beat up against the things that we believe are sustaining us, our kids and their performance. And so when God exposes those things, here's what happens. We freak out. God, are you here? And so we've got to know that our confidence does not come from the things that we believe or sustain us. Our confidence comes from the fact, as Pastor Brian said, that Jesus is sustaining us. Amen? That he's sustaining us. That he's at God's right hand ruling. Here's a, just a point. I'm just going to throw this in. This isn't in your notes. As it connects with verse 38. It says that, here's what I want you all to know. It says that Jesus is never as nervous about our future as we are. And get this, that Jesus is never as worried about our future as we are. He sleep on a cushion because Jesus knows that he is going to reign as Lord. So that's why you can have confidence when things don't happen the way that you want. Because our God is alive. He's reigning. Everything that happens in your life, whether it's good or bad, Jesus is sovereign over. And even the bad things he can use to redeem, to glorify himself, and to grow you. Amen? Verse, uh, here's the third reminder. In verse 40 and 41. Last three years have been hard, y'all. They've been difficult. <sighs> so many things that we thought would happen didn't happen. So much crime, so much racism and sexism and classism, so much division. And if, if, if we don't remember these things, we'll give up. And we've got to know that the beauty of, of uh, our faith is that we serve a God who is reigning today. Today. Here's my third point. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm just thinking about the dolphin season. Amen. <laughs> Here's my third point, verse 40 and 41. Is that we've got to remember that Jesus' kingdom has come. Not in its fullness, but that his kingdom has come. Here's the context that we've got to remember in verse 40 and 41. Is that the miracles, so again, Jesus, again, he just shows himself to be strong. He's bad as he wants to be. They wake him up from his sleep. He wipes the crust out of his eyes. And y'all, our God speaks to the wind and the waves. And there's calm. There's, there's calm. There's, there's peace. There's, there's inexpressible peace because our God speaks. Our God speaks. And there's calm. And you've got to know today that he's in control. What the miracles often evidence for us, Matthew 12, 28, don't, you know, just write it down. What Jesus says when he's being pressed by the religious leaders, he says, but if the spirit of God 
But if by the Spirit of God I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. So what Jesus is saying, again, when he's pressed by the religious leaders, he's saying, listen, what I'm able to do, healing the sick, raising the dead, all that other stuff, it just points to the fact that I'm here. That, that my kingdom has been inaugurated. It will one day be consum consum consummated. And when Jesus comes back and he's going to rule forever, there won't be any more calories. Amen. Praise the Lord. No more death. No more cancer. No more heartaches. So that's coming. But here's what Jesus means to do with the miracles. It, it just, it, it's a reminder to us that he is as bad as we think. Like he's large and he's in charge. There is, no, there is nothing in the solar system that's outside of the realm of his control. And so, he, so the miracles are meant to point to the fact and to really point the disciples to the fact that this man who's in the boat will one day die, be resurrected. He'll sit at God's right hand. And for those of us who've believed in him and trusted in him for the forgiveness of sins, here, here's what Jesus, means, Jesus uh, again, desires to encourage for us is that my kingdom, my lordship. Here's the thing. You don't have to, don't feel like you've got to wait. We're not waiting until Jesus is king. He's king today. That's what he's trying to say to us. He's king today. And so you have to know when you pray to him, when you communicate, when we gather together as God's people, that he's reigning today. That's why it's important that we pray. That's why it's important that we gather, because we're not waiting until some future moment where Jesus reigns. He's reigning today. Amen. And so if he's reigning today, everything that we do has purpose the food distributions, bridge building, uh, the community development, all of those things mean something because he's reigning and risen today. Storms are an opportunity to come to the end of ourself and to transfer our trust from what we believe is sustaining us to God himself. So when Jesus responds and he asks the disciples, and I'm, I'm, I'm done, he says, when he asks the disciples, uh, he says, why do you have so little faith? I believe that one of the challenges that the disciples are experiencing in this particular moment is something I think that we often experience. It's, it's believing that the gospel is just good enough to get you to heaven. So they're believing a, kind of a portion of the gospel, but I don't believe that they're embracing the entirety of the gospel. The entirety of the gospel is that our God will reign. He sent the spirit and he's going to come back to rule. When you have the when you have the completeness of the gospel, here's what happens. It allows everything that you experience to have context. It has chapters. So if salvation is just you dying and going to heaven, if that is the entirety of what salvation is, that's not very encouraging, not very motivating. But if you know that what I'm experiencing, man, is just it's just the chapter and the story that God is ultimately creating, it encourages you and gives you perseverance. It gives you hope. It gives you uh, the ability to continue moving forward. Uh, when life um, perhaps throws you some curveballs. Uh, here's the encouragement again. I just want to have for those of us, perhaps maybe we have some folks here that are not followers of Christ. Uh, my encouragement to you today uh, is uh, to consider the question that the disciples raise in, in um, chapter 4, verse 41. I believe it's an invitation for those of us that are followers of Jesus to recommit or perhaps to repent of at times a lack of faith. I think at times we approach God with just this, um, maybe just the casualness, and perhaps we, we've forgotten some of these reminders. So I think perhaps today is an opportunity, I just want to pray that over you, is it's an opportunity for us to say, you know what, Jesus, I realize as I've experienced some of these storms in my life, I need to repent of, of, um, of not trusting you. And perhaps if you're not a follower of Jesus in here today, perhaps the question that you need to consider and talk with one of us after service is to say, I mean, Jesus... Um, that, that God sent his son into the world. He took on human flesh in fulfillment of God's promises to David. He died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He is enthroned at God's right hand. He has sent the Holy Spirit to effect his rule, and he will come again as final judge to rule. And that is the invitation. And so if you've not placed your faith in our resurrected Savior, again, we would love to invite you uh, to have a discussion or conversation about that. And, uh, Again, I just want to pray the truth as we close of uh, Hebrews 12, verse 1 and 2 over us. And it says, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight 
and the sin which so easily clings to us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Here's the key. Here's the key to enduring storms. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. And y'all, this this is this is what we need to celebrate. And he is seated at the right hand of the throne of God in full control. Amen. Let's pray. Our God and our Father, we bless you and we honor you today. And we just thank you, Lord, that you, uh, you, are, you are our resurrected king. And we just thank you, Lord, for the, perhaps the reminder that we experience stormy seasons, that you are right there with us. You're no longer in a boat. You're no longer on the cross. Uh, you're no longer in the grave. You're at God's right hand, and you are reigning. And for that, we thank you. Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart this morning would be acceptable to your sight. And I pray that you would draw the unsaved, reclaim the backslidden. And the Lord, you would uh, have your way for the rest of this service. We pray this in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Yesterday, Beth and I were in Texas and in the car, and we were, we, were, we were driving several hours. And You ever have one of those moments where, you know, someone says something to you, and then like 10, year, 10 minutes later, you hear them? And you, oh, wow, she said something, and now it's registering with me. I, I, think, I think we've gone like 15 miles since she said that. And then I responded. And she acted like, well, this is normal. He's old, and this is normal. <laughs> We've been married 35 years. She, she's learned to love me uh, in, in my slowness. God has spoken to us through his word, and we want to respond. And just as Stephen just shared, you know, ultimately the response that we desire for ourselves and everyone else is to trust in Jesus, just trust in him. Uh, he saves us. He tells us a storm is coming, and the only way to survive and stand strong in that storm in this life and the life to come is through faith in Him. Um, maybe you're ready to do that and you want to talk to someone more about it, we'd love, we'd love to talk with you. Or you want to explore. You say, hey, I want to talk to someone, but I, I need space to work this out and I want to go to Alpha. I want to go to a, a place where it's, it, it's safe for me to, to hear some of what Christ taught, and then to share my ideas and process that. All of that information is available on our website, so I encourage you. There's Spanish Alpha, English Alpha, Student Alpha, and all of that is uh, that information is on our website, and I just I encourage you to, to avail yourself of that opportunity. Guests, connect with us. We'd, we'd love to uh, we'd love to meet you. I'm going to go back to the Connect kiosk right after the service in just a couple of minutes, and I'd like to, to meet you and just say hello, welcome. Uh, you, can, you can, and we desire for you to fill out a Connect card either in person or to, uh, to go to our website and find the Connect card, a digital card there. Tell us about yourself. Uh, we want to meet you, really. We want you to, you need a, uh, what was it, uh, a, a storm buddy, a storm buddy. I, I like that. And we're, we're great people to hang out with in the middle of a storm, so uh, uh, join us. Okay, just a couple of things, folks, as we close out the service. Just be patient because we've got a couple of things to celebrate, and I need your help to do this. First of all, in a week, we launch a whole new summer term of life groups. We've got a bunch of life groups going on, and uh, uh, don't do life alone. And let, let me just, uh, first of all, if you're new to Riverside, the Know and Grow track, um, uh, that, that, that picture is just not compelling <laughs> at all. It's a lot more fun than that makes it look, okay? I don't know who the old guy up front is with the white hair, but... This is the on-ramp to church life. You want to know how to follow Jesus here at Riverside? Six weeks, Sunday mornings, 
9.30, we serve breakfast, there's children's ministry, uh, come and be a part, starts a week from today. So these first two groups, they, they, they start before we meet again, so you need to know about them. Know and grow, come be a part of Riverside, learn more, learn what, how to follow Jesus here. Kurt, that's a beautiful mugshot, Kurt, we love that. Uh, Kurt is a fresh young teacher here at Riverside. He's doing a great job, and he is a gifted teacher, and he's going to be teaching systematic theology. That's right, doctrine. I was going to bring the book. It's 1,250 pages and tell you, this is, you're going to find this enthralling and engaging, and he's just doing part one, and you, you, you'll, you'll be amazed. Questions you can answer, like, can I pray the Holy Spirit? How does something get to be in the Bible? And what's authoritative and all of these things that apply and they're the foundation for our lives. So Kurt, 915 Sunday mornings, join Kurt. That's for everyone child care provided. All right, let's just Spanish life group, Norma Pagan. There you go. Find more information on the website. No, 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 don't clap for Norma. That's not, this is just not right. I know we know Laura, uh, Norma, we love her. Let's, let's, let's just move through these. Sermon application, Tony Bell and T, Sandra. Um, I, I know you're not going to get everything you need. I just want to give you an idea of what's out there. Next we have Women's Discussion Life Group with Jeannie Perez. Beautiful. Uh, sermon application, Johnny Falzone, Ronald Scarberry. Scarberries and the Falzones will be leading that. Young Adults, the Heron Group. Donnie and Kristen, that is one close-up. All right, women's study, Julia Morton. Join Julia Tuesdays at 10 a.m., the Morton's home. And Juan Gallo and David Foster doing a men's life group. A lot of opportunities, folks, for you to connect in. Women's life group, Melissa is an excellent teacher. Uh, always a great response. Melissa Yosefoff's teaching. So, oh, all right, freeze right there. We're going to introduce to you that, that was our first big announcement, and our last one is this. We're going to introduce to you and welcome in some new members, and I'm going to call their names. Some of them are actually serving today, serving the children's ministry in other places, so you won't see them stand. A couple are sick, but for those that are here, Clay and Alexandria Allen, Sean and Melissa Allen, Rebecca Blanco... Rex Mukate, Rex, I hope I didn't just butcher your last name, brother. He's uh, yeah, you did, you did. Uh, Delroy and Jennifer Webster. All right, we welcome these guys. Um, all right, friends, I'm going to ask you to do this. I'm going to ask everyone to stand, and we're going. I'm going to share with you. Five affirmations of what church membership means. This is not a formality. This is important. Uh, when we think about the fact that God wants us to live in community. And it, uh, I, I am asked this. I really love it when I'm asked it. It's right. It's the right question. Why, why join a church? Why even be a part? Here's what you're saying when you become a part of a community here at, and specifically this community. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an affirmation. If you are a member here at Riverside, we'll, we'll affirm this affirmation with a response after I just walk us through it. Before God, I'm going to step out of here out of the way. Before God, do you see yourselves as sinners who rightly deserve his judgment? Before we affirm that, what we're saying is I need salvation. The Spirit of God has brought a conviction to my heart about my own need. And the doorway to freedom is not denying that, but owning it so I can walk through the door of the gospel. Church, let's respond together. With God's help and by His grace, we do. Number two, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the only Savior for sinners? And do you trust in Him alone for salvation according to the gospel? So affirmation number one, I need salvation. Affirmation number two is God gives salvation. Church, let's respond with God's help 
and by His grace, we do. Number three, with complete dependence on the power of the Holy Spirit, do you commit to walking in a manner worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ? What we're saying here is, I'm giving my life now to follow Jesus as I receive salvation and He transforms me. I'm living for Him as the Lord of my life. Church, let's respond. With God's help and by His grace, we do. Number four, do you commit to being a faithful member of Riverside Church who gives of your prayers, time, talents, and offerings? So I'm going to be a part of this church, give myself fully to serve the Lord here. Church, let's respond. With God's help and by His grace, we do. And finally, fifth affirmation, do you submit yourselves to the authority of Scripture along with the oversight and discipline of Riverside Church? What we mean here is if I go off way away, I want you to come find me. I want to submit my life to be a part of this church family. Let's respond together with God's help and by His grace, we do. It's been a full morning, church. Um, I have to tell you, four weeks ago, four or five weeks ago, we said goodbye to Pearl Chinloy. Pearl's been a member of Riverside for 44 years. I think that was the number, 45 years. Well, we said goodbye to her. We gave her a plant. When she got a gift, she said, well, I'm not leaving. I'm going to just keep coming back Sunday after Sunday. And so we've just, that's supposed to be a joke, Pearl. I'm sorry. No one's laughing. Uh, but it, her departure has, uh, has uh, just taken place over a few weeks, and we honor this, this great woman of God. And so stop by, see Pearl over here, say goodbye to her as she's moving to Birmingham today. <laughs> Julianne's going to close. Church, let's respond to the hearing of God's word by singing the doxology together as we leave. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you as you go. Go in peace, Riverside. See you next week.